Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode and today we're going to look at three very affordable, really high quality vintage lenses from Germany and if you're looking for vintage lenses for your mirrorless camera, these ones are seriously capable. They're pretty cheap too, with prices starting from around £30 or so. They were made in M42 screw mount and also in exact amount. And the exact amount versions are that little bit cheaper. They are beautiful optics for not much cash. So let's check out the lenses. I've got three to show you today and here they are sitting here we've got the Maya Optic Gorlitz Oreston 1. f1.8 50 millimeter and that's the lens that went on to become the pretty much ubiquitous Pentacon 50 mil f1.8 it's the same lens same optics and it has a Maya Optic origin the second lens I'd like to show you today is the Maya Optic Lidith f3.5 30 millimeters. That's quite an unusual focal length. Uh, it works very nicely on full frame and on APS-C it gives pretty close to my uh, ideal focal length of 40 millimeters. So this one works really nicely on APS-C if you want a 40 mil lens, but it's a great 30 on full frame. And we've also got this lens. This is the Maya Optic Domiplan f2.8 50 mil. So another 50 mil lens to look at. This is a very nice cheap 50 mil. It is optically nice. And it's one of the fantastic Maya Optic lenses that we're going to look at today. So without further ado, let's check out the first lens. So the first lens we're going to look at today is the Lidith f3.5 30 millimeters. Now, <clears throat> as I said before, this is quite an unusual focal length for a lens. Most wides in this sort of area are around about 28 millimetres, but you know, two millimetres makes no odds. The fact is this is a very nice wide and as it's a 3.5, it's got inherent sharpness as well. It's a, a, a pretty sharp lens and if you stop it down, it gets even sharper as most lenses will. Let's just have a quick look at this lens closely in uh, more detail before we talk about its optical qualities and there's our Maya optic lens the aperture ring is at the front on these it's a stepless aperture and you can see there that the values run from f whoops you can see there rather that the values run from f 3.5 round to f what is it, f22 on this one so it closes down nice and tightly the focus ring is at the back and that moves nice and cleanly and smoothly these lenses are all metal and they're very well made and they've stood the test of time this one's still in really good order this is an exacter mount version these are as I said, slightly cheaper. This, this is the cheap way to buy your lenses. I'm not sure why the exact amount versions are cheaper because you can buy adapters for them for any mirrorless camera. Perhaps it's because they're not quite as useful on a film camera. You have to have an exacter film camera and there are very many fewer of those around than there are M42 cameras. But a very nice little lens, all metal, uh, very nicely made, no problems at all there. The only problem I found in using this is that these two rings, although they do have a tactile milled metal grip, they don't feel very different when you've got the camera to your eye. They're both very thin 
and they've both got the same feel so it's rather dif difficult to differentiate them. These lenses are known for their colour rendition and uh, this one is no exception. It does give really nice colours. The minimum focus distance on these is, as with many East German lenses, very, very short. So you can get really close to your subject. It's not a macro lens, but it's kind of not far off in some regards. And you can get far closer with these lenses than you can with most Western lenses, or indeed most lenses from any other nation. Now, this is a fairly sharp lens. It's not the sharpest lens I've ever used, but it's certainly not the softest. Wide open, it's f3.5, so it does have some inherent sharpness because the aperture is not that big, and as you probably know, the more you close down an aperture, the smaller aperture that you use, the sharper your images, generally speaking, will be. And that's certainly the case with vintage lenses. Vintage lenses are not, by and large, all things considered, are not as sharp as their modern counterparts, certainly wide open. And you do have to stop them down a little bit to get maximum sharpness out of them. Once you do that with this one, it does get extremely sharp and you can get some razor sharp images out of it. Though, of course, you lose any background blur that the lens can give or, or, or at least it decreases the more you stop down. And there isn't a great deal to begin with with this lens anyway. A maximum aperture of f3.5 is not going to give you a great deal of blur unless you use that ability of the lens to go very close to your subject so at very close distances yeah this lens will give you plenty of blur but it's certainly not a blur monster but then again how much blur do you really want like any photographic element there are occasions when it's appropriate to use plenty of blur. There are even occasions when it's appropriate to use maximum blur, but I would suggest those occasions are probably in the minority. You're not going to want every shot ultra blurry. Um, so blur should be used judiciously with caution and appropriate to the shot. So I don't think the fact that this lens doesn't give you too much blur is too much of a handicap in most situations. It doesn't seem to vignette very much. Again, that's probably because of the rather small uh, maximum aperture that it's got. And it certainly has a distinctive look. It's got this silver edge. Uh, I don't know, to me that denotes a sort of a, a, a late 60s sort of look and I, I, I think it does have that look and it's a very groovy kind of look and it certainly looks like a vintage lens it looks like a precision instrument which it is a precision instrument it's a very very beautiful optic one thing i haven't mentioned is how wonderful i've found this lidith to be on an aps-c sensor when i put this on my fuji camera uh, my Fujifilm X-T3, I get an equivalent focal length of 40 millimeters, and that, if you're a regular viewer to this show, you will know that 40 mil is my favorite focal length, pretty much, uh, uh, apart perhaps from the 85, 90 focal length, which I do enjoy, but I do really love shooting on the street with a 40 millimeter lens. And this will become one, or effectively become one, uh, and with the word become in quotation marks, nothing about the lens changes, as you almost certainly know. But effectively that becomes a 40mm on APS-C, so it's brilliant for that as well. A great little lens available from about £30, which is what I paid for this one. A really good, nice, cheap way into vintage lenses and a really great addition to any vintage lens collection. Okay, the next lens I'm going to look at is the Domiplan f2.8 50mm. And I actually bought this lens for this show 
not knowing that I had another one somewhere which when I wanted to find it today I couldn't find it. I wanted to find it because it's got the same silver edging as the Lidith here so it would have shown the family resemblance. When I show it you in a moment more closely you'll, you'll see more. I mean this is a later version and it doesn't have that silver edging but there we are. So this is the this is the Domiplan F2.8 50mm so let's have a closer look. So these lenses just screw on and off the camera and there's the M42 mount and you can see that it's a little different to the bayonet mount that we saw on the previous lens on the Lidith. Uh, this is a later version of the lens and unfortunately it seems to have been, uh, what can I say, cheapened up a little bit uh, because it doesn't have that nice chrome effect on the uh, aperture and the focus rings here. The aperture ring is at the front the same as it is on the Lidith and on this one, this one has click stops from f2.8 right the way around to f22 so this one also closes down pretty small. The focus ring again is at the back or at least in the middle and it moves nice and cleanly with no problems so this lens also Whoops, this lens also has stood the test of time. It's slightly stiff actually. I think the grease has gone a little bit old, but there's none of the awful bumpy, lumpy feeling you get with dried grease. So this one is still fine to use. I think in these later versions, I think there might be some plastic there. So these really have been... Um, well, what can I say, can I rationalise, streamlined, cheapened up really, in that some plastic parts have been used. It doesn't affect the optics, the optics are no different. This is a lens with really nice optics and we'll talk about those in a moment, but it's certainly clear that the later versions of these lenses have been uh, fitted with some plastic parts. Not that that's a really bad thing or, or, or indeed a bad thing at all. It doesn't really affect the use of the lens and it doesn't seem to affect the longevity of the lens either. This lens must date from the late 70s, I think, early 80s sometime. And it's still in really nice condition. The plastic hasn't degraded. It's not worn. It's not broken and it seems to be in all ways really um, to endure just as well as the metal version does so that is nice to see I'm just wondering if let's see in the earlier version have we got yeah we've got engraved markings and engraved markings on the later version so we've still got the engraved markings on the later versions those are not going to wear off so that's really good. Minimum focus distance on this lens is, oh gosh, 0.75 centimetres. So it really doesn't have a very close minimum focus distance. Unlike most of its East German compatriots, most of the East German lenses I've used go pretty close. This one doesn't. It has a fairly long minimum focus distance of 75 centimetres. Now, this is a fairly sharp lens. I think it might be a Tessar design. Please do let me know if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments box. But I think this might be uh, a Tessar lens. Now, Tessar, Tessar lenses are inherently sharp. They do have excellent inherent sharpness. And they generally can't be made any wider than f2.8. It's very, very difficult to make a Tessar lens go any wider than f2.8. So that's what makes me think this one is a Tessar, together with the sharpness of the images that you get from it. Colours are really nice on this lens, as they are from most of the East German lenses I've used. 
colours tend to be fairly bumped up and fairly saturated on these German lenses and this one does demonstrate that perhaps not all the time but it does uh, it can make those very saturated colours if the lighting conditions are right and it does depend colour does depend to a large degree on lighting conditions if you have good strong sunlight so, uh, colours will always be I found anyway colours will always appear more saturated and more lively and more vivid than they will if the light is the dreadful sort of grey overcast light that we get so often here in the UK um, so it is colour representation and performance are very dependent on that but in the right conditions this one is really nice contrast is good and there's very little vignetting with it either um, this is not a lens that will trouble you too much with dark corners is f2.8 enough yes f2.8 is enough um, unless you want to make stacks and stacks of blur and blur is your or or, or is a big priority with you then f2.8 is more than enough aperture even at a, a reasonable distance of I don't know up to 10 feet or so f2.8 will blur the background and it will give you some separation between your subject and your background so you know it's enough to separate them you, you know you don't necessarily need a whole big wadge of massive blur in the background this will separate the subject from the background and it will focus attention on your subject entirely sufficiently in my view what more can I say about it I'm not sure there is any more I can say about really about it really I think the images speak for themselves um, if you want to try one if you're looking for a nice vintage 50 try one of these get an exact amount they're really really cheap an exact amount um, they were made in the tens of thousands probably in the hundreds of thousands so there are many 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 of them around and supply far exceeds demand so these are not gonna go up massively in price anytime soon as usual ignore the inflated prices uh, on buy it nows on eBay those are usually inflated unless you're very lucky and if you if you are lucky click buy it now right right immediately because somebody will do it within seconds if you don't if that's a good price a beautiful little lens very very nice little thing available very cheaply and will make you some great images recommended by Xenography okay lens number three of this week's collection is the Oreston my optic Oreston f1.8 50mm and this is the lens that really became the Pentacon f1.8 50mm of which there were millions and millions and millions made there were a fair few made in this body uh, only the body and the markings are different in fact even the body is very similar so it's really a question of same lens slightly different body so Meyer optic Oriston and the Pentacon f1.8 50 same lens now this is a really nice lens I've talked about it fairly recently actually so I won't go into too much detail here but it is worth mentioning because it's such a nice one let's have a closer look before we go any further so there's our Oriston lens and look what a lovely thing this is look what a beautifully made thing this is it's so precise the fit and finish is excellent the standard of manufacture is excellent the feel of the lens is top quality it's a very very nice piece of kit the focus ring is at the front on this lens there it goes and we've got focusing distances of what have we got ah now this focuses nice and closely 33 centimeters and 
of course it goes all the way out to infinity at the other end and then we've got the aperture ring at the back which has got this very groovy zebra pattern on it so again late 60s early 70s maximum aperture of f1.8 and it goes all the way around to f16 a very nicely made lens all metal only six aperture blades so there will be a possibility of some hexagonal um, bouquet if you stop down a little this is an exact amount again there's the exact bayonet mount and uh, this lens was a little cheaper than its m42 counterparts a very very nice lens indeed so how is it optically well it's really nice actually it's well okay let's look at sharpness first I say this is a really nice lens I really do like this lens but it's not the sharpest lens I've ever used it's certainly not on a par with for example the Carl Zeiss Jena 50 1.8 that's my gold standard for, for uh, vintage 50 mil sharpness it's certainly as sharp as many of the Western lenses of the time and it's not particularly soft it's just that used wide open you can see a little softness in its images stop down a little bit to f2 or f2.8 or f4 and the image becomes very very sharp indeed as all lenses do but i'd say wide open this lens is probably on a par with something like the helios 44 or something of that sort maybe the Jupiter 8 something like that colors are very nice I found this lens very good for color it gives good strong colors with plenty of saturation it's not as saturated as some of the lenses I've used saturation is sort of moderate ish on this one but it can be it can be quite pronounced again if the lighting conditions are correct but this lens won't flood your images with saturated color in the way that some will so a nice balanced color performance from this one contrast is good um, there is some vignetting with this lens you will see dark corners if you shoot wide open that's not always a bad thing I actually quite like it in some shots and it can add to a shot it can add atmosphere and drama to a shot though like all elements like all visual elements it shouldn't be over used background blur is nice on this lens it gives some very soft very gentle very very lovely feeling sort of blur so sort of very cushiony pillowy loveliness in its blur department but it can give a little harshness at certain points there is harshness that will creep into this lens's images at certain points and at certain arrangements of distance um, between the camera the subject and the background so it can give you a little harshness here and there it doesn't crop up too much but it does crop up um, so that can happen from time to time most of the time it's nice and soft though this is a nice little lens I do like this lens I use it quite a bit and it's great for close work as well it's got that wonderful 33 centimeter minimum focus distance and as I say I really appreciate uh, appreciate that many of the East German lenses have that feature and it's a really good feature I wish many of the uh, West I wish the Western manufacturers had adopted that as well but for their own reasons they didn't it was really just the East German uh, manufacturers who included that very close focus distance I think modern lenses will do that modern lenses tend to go very close there they're, they're uh, you know really versatile in their minimum focus distance but if you want a lens 
that will give you a nice close image, not a macro image, but a very close image. Get an East German lens and the Meyer Optic uh, Oriston or the Pentacon uh, 50mm f1.8 will give that to you. A very nice little lens available for about £30. You don't need to pay any more than that. A real great addition to any vintage lens collection or a great way to get started in vintage lenses too. Very well recommended from me. So that's about it from me for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. Many, many thanks to everybody who subscribed to this show. Subscribers help to build the channel's presence. They help to build the channel and we're nearly at 30,000. So if you've enjoyed this episode or if you think it's even halfway worthy of the sub, click that button please. It will help me bring you more content like this. Many, many thanks to everybody who's clicked the button so far and to anyone who's thinking of doing it in the future. Thank you. Many, many thanks also to patrons, patrons old and new patrons who've been with us for a long, long time, patrons who've joined and left, patrons who are still with us, patrons who've just joined us. Uh, to dip their toes into the water. Many, many thanks to everybody. It's thanks to you that this channel can do what it does. I could not do what this channel does without that support from patrons. So many, many thanks to all of you. And if you like the content on this channel, why not consider becoming a patron yourself? You can do it over at patreon.com forward slash sonography and you can do it for just one of your earth dollars per month so please do think about doing that that would be greatly appreciated that's it from me for this week i hope you've enjoyed it please don't forget to tune in next week don't forget to hit the subscribe button don't forget to ring the bell thing don't forget to do all those youtube type things like subscribe ring the bell etc etc that's it from me for this week. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please join me next time for some more xenography.